Hi, I'm Gail Jones, and this is session four with our Mosaic Mirror Project. Oh boy, for session one we went over supplies, and I went over how to cut the Wonder Under so that you might be able to cut it and have that idea not be as paranoid as I was about cutting it with a utility knife. So I showed that in session two. We mounted our mirrors and I went over about how to cover it so that they don't get marked during the process and how to cut when you're doing not straight edge cutting. Session three, we went and I nipped special interest things out of my Tessera, my plate that um, keepsake plate that I'm using for my Tessera and I'm going to review a little bit of that today. And we also worked on our straight edge mirror, that um, project that we had. And we went on and I started that to get you motivated, those that are doing a straight form, straight ahead form mirror. Now in this session, we're going to play around with a round mirror. And before we get started on that, I want to go over, I love this little flower right here, and I'm going to use the nippers to release it from within this plate. It was the center of the plate. And as you see, I have two of them already pre-cut for you pre-nipped, as it would say, because these aren't scissors, these are nippers. So again, I like the organic feel. And in session number three, we saw where I sort of nipped a little too much, and then we had to allow that to be used. There we go. And that's good enough. So I just wanted to go over that with you, with nipping. Just take no longer, no much, no blah, blah, blah. That's why I wanted to go over that with you, with nipping. That you do not want to let your nippers go further than one quarter of an inch, one eighth of an inch, one quarter of an inch in and to nip. So that way you have a little more control of where you're nipping. If you need to, it makes you feel better, you can use your Sharpie marker and draw a nip line if that will help you to get where you want to go with your nippers. And then you might have a little bit more control might not, but you might. So I'm going to put them aside. And this is what we need to fill with our Tessera. And I am going to use the edge of the plate where it's nice and smooth and rounded. Where I broke the plate, it's not so smooth and it's not so nice but I'm going to use this to my benefit. And I think I want to circle my plate with the edges of my broken tessera. So I'm going to do my placement and we're going to speed this up a bit so that it won't be so boring.
Oh, okay. And we can push it here and push it there to round it out a bit. And now I'm going to do that same process and I'm going to start and show you how I adhere it down. Voila! Oh, now my border is adhered down. Woo! That was a lot of work. Alrighty. Hmm. Be a good time for caffeine. Remember our little special pieces? Now I can decide where I would like them to place because I believe I want to put the white side of the plate, the non-pattern side of the plate, in as my fill-in with Tessera. So I want to put these three pretties in. And remember, this is our hanging system, so this is our top. Please keep that in mind as you work because it's so easy to lose yourself in putting the pieces down and getting the rhythm of a hearing, placing, a hearing, placing that you might forget top, bottom, side to side. And you already have your hanging system down, so you're committed to where the top is. So just want to always say, remember, and keep, make sure that your top is right up in the top, that you don't, when you turn it around to look or to replace your piece as you're working on it, not to forget, to forget not to put it back in line so that you're not frustrated when you get all complete and you realize the piece is upside down. So these two are of the same size where this is a bit smaller. So I do I want to do them all up top. 
Do I want to do it symmetrically? I think I like it all up top here, because this is the top of my mirror. It's going to be hanging. The one downside is we don't put our pieces on an easel when we're working like a 2D artist. We just have to hope for the best because we work face down like this. Sometimes I do get a ladder and climb up and look down from a height. But I think that's how I want to commit myself to it. When you put the adhesive down, you're, you could pop it off. with a screwdriver and get underneath in there and pop it. But you run the risk of breaking your piece. So if you have extra, then that's not a big issue. But if it's very precious and that's the only one that you have, you might want to think again. And sometimes placing it and walking away, go do something else, get a cup of tea, walk the dog, make dinner, and then come back and look at it, that sometimes really helps to get a good view. As you see, I put this piece on top of the wire. It is a little raised, but that will be fine because when you fill it in with the tessera, and when we grout it, it really won't be noticeable. So now I'm ready for the fill-in. So again, like in session three, it's like making a puzzle, a backwards puzzle, just seeing where the pieces fit in. That's a little long for me. I don't want, especially up at the top. I want all my pieces pretty much about the same size. See where that one was a little bit long and I snipped it? That's what we want to do and fill this all the way in with white. Now, here's my top. See my hanging system? So this is my top. That's what your piece is going to look like, filled in. Now I did do these a little bit lower and you can see where I added printed, small printed. They're pretty much about the same size. They're very small rectangular size just around my mirror here. This is a mirror. It's covered, but it is the mirror. And then I have the edges of the plate framing in my piece. Now we are ready at this point to grout. And so when you come back for session five, we will take you through the grouting process. Please be ready. It is messy, messy, messy. Thank you so much. Uh -huh.